morning and welcome back to SMA News for the latest termly update. I'm Dorian. And I'm Elsa. On the 3rd of May, our school hosted the annual Lucian Book Awards and welcomed eight schools from across the Lucian Borough. And a few guests, judges, including published writer Adam Barron, who also talked about his work as an author. I'm here with the Lewisham Book Awards and we're going to go and talk to some of the teams about the books that they are discussing and making a presentation for. Let's go! I'm really excited to be here. I was actually one of the librarians that was involved when this first started. It's really interesting to see the way the number of schools has changed, the way the kids are approaching it, and I think it's a really worthwhile event. It's been fascinating. It's really interesting seeing the mix of kids from the schools adapting into their team. They don't have a choice, they can't take time, sink or swim, and then they're grasping the task in hand, plus they're picking up on the leads that the judges are saying. Some brilliant uh, young people here, passionate about books, and they are putting together some amazing presentations about the books they're reading, and they are making me want to read each and every one of these books. I'm giving them advice to think about what they can say about the author. The teamwork is fantastic. You can, you can see they're all engaged. They didn't leave me. They are, they are leaping on this task. Boy Underwater is my latest one, published by Harper Collins. What a fabulous event. I've just been going around looking at all the tables, doing a bit of judging as I'm going around, seeing who's working well with each other, seeing who's not. Um, and I think we're going to have some really good presentations when they come and feedback to us. The audience that it's targeted for because it's very relatable and it's easy to read because of the format. It just like entices you into it, like the pictures on the front as well, like they le they're like cliffhangers. It just reflects current problems that are going on in the world at the moment about refugees and how they're escaping their countries. Um, it includes um, mystery and um, it's funny and light and it also has um, darker, more serious um, things that are included as well. One place to another, from the girl to um, the girl's mum's brother, back to the girl. It says like issues about like family issues and relationships and like peer pressure and stuff and it shows you that you can struggle with these things but like there are people who can help you and deal with them as well. I think it's also the storyline because it can relate to some other people, maybe younger people, something like that. You get different experiences of refugees. These children so it'll be a little bit relatable and it'll be good for people and children that love comic books. And twists. If you love twists, this is your book. It has all the genres in one book and it's like very mysterious in a way. When you get into it, you're like, oh, I want to find out more, what it's going to be next. That's what you want to know. Yeah, it's a really good book. It really expresses people who like basketball and really it says why people shouldn't be worried about what shoes they have. Champions again! For the second year in a row, SMA pupils are crowned the champions of the Jack Petchy Speak Out Regionals. We were lucky enough to host the event this year. Let's dive straight into the winning speeches from Liama and Carl. I've been asked to share one piece of advice about public speaking. My tip to our competitors tonight is to try and relax and enjoy yourself. I know that's far easier said than done. Remember, you've already proved yourself in your school event, so in the words of our SMA school motto, this is now your opportunity to let your light shine. Thank you. An iPhone X. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not seeing things. I did just do that. I threw my phone. Me, a 15-year-old girl who once couldn't eat, sleep, even breathe without a mobile phone, just threw away, just like that. I know some of you guys are wondering, how, why am I no longer an addict? The phrase goes, big brother's watching you. But what you don't know is big brother's little sister, AKA your smartphone, is listening to you. Let me tell you a story about how smart your smartphone really is. My mother and I will have a little heart-to-heart. -heart. 
a DMC, a deep, meaningful conversation. You know, the ones that stay at home, family affairs. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, another presence was among us. Little sister disguised as Ceres, sinister, strange, monotone voice, as she said, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> but wait, she proceeds to regurgitate the whole conversation word for word. And I mean word for word. Imagine the horror. I looked at mom, mom looked at me, and all I, I done was this. And that's when I decided that I preferred my private life over my social life. And that's when I left my phone on airtime. But ladies and gentlemen, that's not it. You think you're controlling your phone? Your phone is controlling you. By them, I mean little sister's big daddy. The mon multinational, monopolizing mobile phone companies, plastering their advertisements on billboards, posters, buses, and the one place where there's not a phone in sight, the cinema. The slogans keep on coming. You've got Samsung, imagine the things we can build. You've got Nokia, connecting people, more like profiling people. But finally, you've got Apple, think different. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm asking you to do today. Think different. By dropping your phone, you are thinking differently. So think different to think free. Picture the scene. Me, Carl. Responsible, polite, and let's be honest, pretty handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian High Street, Wednesday night. I feel it again. The tap, tap, tap. The cold, long arm of the law feeling my collar. Now this isn't the first time. Nor is it the second time the Lucian police have pulled me over. But it's the fifth time, ladies and gentlemen, the fifth time I was pulled over. So why do you think I was pulled over? Stop and search? No. I was pulled over for riding my electric scooter on public land. Public land. Public land, AKA my route to school. Now I bet none of you, or barely anyone in this room, even considered this. And that's the problem. Electric scooters aren't even considered as an alternative type of transport to go to and from school. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we will change that. Because in a time of colossal climate change and rising global warming, why has no one even considered this? I mean, seriously, in a year where literally thousands have lost their lives to natural disasters this year alone, do I, no, should I, have to fight for 100 centimetres of clean, green space, which is usually taken up by a gas-guzzling red monstrosity that calls itself the school bus? No, I shouldn't. Let me give you an example. You're a young child, and you see your older brother on his motorcycle, and you think to yourself, one day, that's going to be me. But you see, in the time we're living in, and what we know combustion engines do to our rotting climate, we can't think like that. But that same young child watches in admiration as his older, and let's be honest, pretty handsome, brother charges off like Thor on his thunderbolt of a scooter. So, let me leave you with this. Let's kickstart a new way in young people travel from A to B. Actually, P to E, petrol to electric. And let's recycle the words of that 80s classic, we'll always be together, forever, forever, in electric dreams. Thank you. Ladies and gents, Lewisham 2019, Jack Petchy Speaker Challenge, St. Matthew's Academy has done it again. Currently I'm outstanding, I feel amazing, I'm happy, second in the whole entire illusion. All that hard work was like, worth it, and thank you to Miss Person, thank you Miss Person, it's all to you. Just one. Jack Bitchy, I want to say thank you to everybody, thank you to the friends, the support, Miss Perzo, big help, and all the judges, just everyone here, thank you very much.
The sun was shining into the main hall where a warm welcome by Deacon Javier greeted staff year 6, 10 and 11 pupils for a special academy exam service. After the service, the 11 pupils walked across the fields where Mr. Lee reflected on the pupils' academic journey in the past year. Let's head over to the exam service. Your time of reflection and preparation for this season of exams. Now, we all feel slightly nervous sometimes when we talk about exams and testing. It's part of our life, part of our educational life. But it's good when we can come together to pray and to reflect and to seek confidence, calm and peace in our relationship with God. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. A candle's light is designed to be seen and is best placed high up so that it can give light to all. It is not hidden away. Our life to bless these young people of year six year 10 and year 11. May God bless them with the wisdom to seek the truth and learn from the experiences of others. Amen. Amen. May God bless them with the love to share their gifts and talents with others. Amen. May God bless them with the courage to act for justice. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's really, really fabulous to have our pupils being able to share with us, us in a service like that. So thank you to everybody for doing that. I do want to say good luck to each and every one of you. And I say that from all of the staff um, that I know have worked incredibly hard. They're all going to have their fingers crossed over the next coming weeks. They're all going to be wishing you good luck um, because they want you to do your very best. Time for the latest in school sports and we're off to the Lucian Bar Athletic Championship with a massive 10 SMA records. We're at Sutcliffe Sports Centre slash park and we're going to be doing a series of events including 100 metres, 200 metres, javelin and many more. For the year 9 and 10, hurdles for the boys. I think they're going to do good, not to put the hurdles higher. So far it's been going good, you know, Francis came second, so that was cool. Come on, Shannon! Watching the 1,500 metres girls race for Year 7, it's going well so far. Welcome guys, this is the 800 metres, the girls. So now we're going to be having the 300 meter races for the last year then. Just easy. Just easy, yeah. <laughs> Discus, and that's what I'm going to be doing. How do you feel about it? 
I feel very confident because the last time I did it, I came second. So I'm aiming to come first, isn't it? Well done to the SMA Athletics teams. All people who finish in the top two for the event will go and represent Lucian in the London finals. The Year 6 football team have been up to some pretty exciting stuff this year. We have an exclusive interview with the team and head coach. As captain, I hold lots of responsibilities and I'm really proud of my team at the moment. So we went into the um, Super Cup and we went to the quarter-final as well. And right now we're third in the league and we're all really proud and our team works super hard together. We, sometimes we lose, sometimes we win and we still stay as a team. We still strive on to become better. We learn from our mistakes. But even though we've lost a lot of difficult teams, we still stayed strong and we still but, um, rooted on the people that were on the pitch. When we play, we always work together and make sure we're all trying our best. And if one falls down, we always help them up instead of to keep playing. And the motivation that we always have when we're playing and the strength we have together makes us a better Team. Um, you need to know how to defend and um, also to keep the ball. Um, if it's coming closer to the goal, you should like, um, defend the goal and um, kick it um, really far to where you're going to. We came in the top three, so we, we tried our best to try and work collaboratively to score but unfortunately we didn't get to score a goal but we worked very hard and I'm just happy that we got through that cup. I think that we did a great job when we're playing football. I think that we need to work on passing to each other um, coordination but overall I think it was a good match. I thought that at first it's going to be really hard but when I have um, my team around me, I feel like um, I, we can do this and we can go to the finals. As a goalkeeper, like you can go through like rough times. So like if you don't save the goal, like you yourself get upset. But like you don't need to get upset. You can like like when you're like when it's like half time, you can like speak to your friend about it. Brianna and I, we always talk about what we, what um next moves we're gonna make and so. And yeah, we always help each other out if we're having a bad time. I'm so immensely proud of the, the girls' team this season. Uh, from a group of girls that shows so much dedication and teamwork and their togetherness from going back from September where they did training with um, secondary on a Wednesday after school. They put in time, they would always come and ask me questions. And we made third in the league, which was a fantastic achievement. So the top four then made the Super Cup, which we took part in on Saturday. Um, we drew against both of the teams, which won their, both of their leagues respectively. But so, so, so proud of them all. Their dedication, their teamwork, and as you can see through their interviews, just how much enjoyment they had in the season and just gives them a good stead for when they go on to secondary, whether they go and join uh, the year 17, and hopefully that will happen. I've been Michael, and back to the studio. Time for Sweet Street, presented by Nathan. Time for Tweet Street, your timely updates on events we may miss. SMA Debate Mate 18 won their round at London Debate Mate Cup at Goldsmith University. It was both nerve wracking and extremely exciting for our pupils. They spoke like professional stars and won six out of nine rounds. The A team are now preparing for the regional finals. Well done and good luck. Pupils from the Year 8 Brilliant Cup were able to enrol at Goldsmith University for a day of intellectual gymnastics and had a tour to St James Church for an art and had overall a great day. Teachers and pupils are super proud for Natalie in Year 11 for making a lamp for her DT coursework. 
Ambitious and exciting work produced in the art exam by our Year 11 pupils. Thank you so much to the famous author, Jill Murphy, for personalised and signed copies of your novels. Year 4 are so grateful for your replies to their letters. Year 2 enjoyed their specialist lesson in secondary making cookies in the food room. Sports study pupils led a Year 1 P lesson using the communication, organisation and knowledge. Great work! The primary signing choir came to the secondary to sign You've Got a Friend of Me. And if you ask me, that was a brilliant performance. And we even get to have a special guest speaker, Lindsay, from an amazing charity called Hearing Dogs for Deaf People. Aw, now I want a dog. 22 successful Year 9 pupils after having completed a grueling DFE qualifying expedition in Farnborough, 14 hours of walking, navigating all over the countryside with heavy rucksacks and made it back to school to pass the expedition. And finally, we welcome Georgina Brown from the Wilbur Smith Foundation and Ed Davey, an investigative journalist and author for two insightful and engaging adventure writing workshops with Year 7 and 8 pupils. Both sessions were thoroughly enjoyable and led to some brilliant creative work. For more news, follow us on our Twitter and Instagram at Matagad. Thank you for tuning in to the latest school news. And remember, if you want to change the world, you have to know about it. BBC Young Reporter, SMA News, Blackheath. Thank you.